Hi everybody. So in the past few months, I have gotten super into buying vintage jigsaw puzzles off of eBay. I swear, every time I go onto eBay and I'm just browsing around, seeing what's out there, I end up with like a list of even more puzzles that I wanna buy. Eventually, I'm hoping to make individual videos for pretty much every single one of these puzzles. I think they're all really interesting but it's going to take me a while to get through all of them. So I thought that today I would just do a puzzle haul, just kind of show you everything that I've been collecting. And here is what I want from you. Down in the comments, I want you to tell me if there are any puzzles that really catch your eye that you want me to move to the top of the list. Let me know what you would be most interested in seeing me do in a video and yeah, let's get into it. So all of these puzzles, not this one, all of these puzzles over here, I actually just got in the mail like two days ago. These were not from eBay. These were sent to me from a viewer named Jan. So I have decided to call these puzzles the Jan Collection. I get emails every so often from viewers who want to send me puzzles and I just can't take everyone up on that because I don't have that much space. <laughs> but when Jan described what she had, I was just like, I've never even heard of any of these and I want them. These are so interesting. <laughs> like, can we just, can we just this holographic Springbok puzzle? Like, how did I not know that this was a thing? This is the most Karen puzzles puzzle that has ever existed. I am fully obsessed with this. So let me move the cameras so I could give you a closer look. And yeah, let's take a look at all of these puzzles. <laughs> All right, so here we have the Prismagic puzzle from Springbok. As I said, this is a holographic puzzle. This entire thing is like a plastic sheet that they had to glue onto the box. It's not printed on here. This is like a separate piece of paper that's glued on. And just look at how beautiful that is. It's textured like in these um, hexagons. You can feel the lines when you run your hands over it. And when you turn it, the colors all change. And then if we look at the pieces, they are just as you would hope. They are that exact same texture. They're super shiny. Like, have you ever seen a more beautiful puzzle piece in your life? How did this exist? And I did not know about it until right now. This puzzle came out in the 80s. You can see it has the Springbok green cardboard, the really thick pieces. And since it's just a repeating texture, Putting this together will be very similar to a solid colored puzzle because all that you have to go on are these hexagon shapes and like what part of the hexagon you're looking at. So I fully expect this to be a very, very high difficulty puzzle. Also, my favorite part of this whole thing is the tagline that they put on the side. So, okay, before I show you, do you remember when I did this puzzle? This is the uh, Jackson Pollock puzzle from Springbok, which they say is the world's most difficult puzzle. Like it's right there on the box. They fully proclaim that. Well, on the side of this one, um, I guess they weren't quite as confident because it says possibly the world's most difficult puzzle. <laughs> I guess when you've already released the world's most difficult puzzle, you can't say that this one is also the world's most difficult puzzle. This one is just, you know, maybe the world's most difficult puzzle. <laughs> All right, moving on. These two puzzles are what really caught my attention from Jan's email. She told me that she had two solid colored puzzles and I had never even heard of any of them. And as you might know, I have started collecting solid colored puzzles. So I was just like, I need these. So this one is called The Red Menace. And I, I think this is my 
fourth solid red jigsaw puzzle because there was the ketchup puzzle, the infamous Heinz ketchup puzzle. There's the blue kazoo red puzzle. And what is the other one? Oh, the other one is literally in this stack down here. And then there's the vintage Springbok red puzzle, which I'll get to in a little bit. But anyway, um, this one was made by the American Publishing Corporation. So it's not one of the like huge jigsaw puzzle companies that I'm used to that make, you know, interesting puzzles like this. So I don't know how else I would have like stumbled across this besides, you know, somebody reaching out and telling me about it. So here on the front, you can see the cut of how all of the pieces fit together. Um, it's a circular puzzle and they have a lot of these like wavy edges. So they're not trying to trick you because the actual edges are flat, but then on the inside, they have a lot of these kind of wavy lines. So that means that these pieces don't fully lock together and it might be a little harder to tell like what actually goes together. So yeah, I think one, someday when I get to this one, uh, this is also gonna be a really big challenge. <laughs> and then we have the Purple Passion puzzle from Bits and Pieces. And you guys know that I have been doing Bits and Pieces puzzles for like literally my whole life, and I just had no idea that they ever made a solid colored puzzle like this. The copyright date is 1991, so um, it's basically the exact same age as me. With this one, the boxes actually look really similar, but this one does not give you the outline of how the pieces fit together. However, huh, that's interesting. Now, I haven't really like taken a close look at these pieces before, but looking at them next to each other, these pieces look very, very similar. Like, I wonder if these were manufactured at the same place or at the same time because the shapes are super similar to each other. You can see that these have the, the wavy edges as well. The cardboard is not the exact same color, but um, they're about, uh, they're not quite the same thickness either. <laughs> yeah, the red one is a little bit thicker than the purple one, but the cuts look very similar to each other. So maybe I'll have to do the two of these in the same video and do a full comparison. Let me know if you wanna see that. All right, this next one, I am so intimidated by. This looks so difficult. Like, it's not calling itself the most difficult puzzle, but I honestly think this might be one of the most difficult puzzles of all of these. So this is the Labyrinthus, a terrific maze craze puzzle. It is 600 pieces. And as you can see, this is actually from Italy. So all of the main text is in Italian and then they have it uh, translated into English right here. So this is the picture. And once you put it together, it should be a real maze where you just have to connect the two squares to each other. But just look at these pieces. Oh my god. So not only is it a maze, so every piece is just stripes essentially, but it also has triangular pieces. I've like Never seen this in a puzzle, I don't think. Not for a long time anyway. This is very rare. Like, how are you even supposed to? This is gonna, this is gonna give me a headache. I already know it. But here's the thing. For the edge of the puzzle, since, you know, the pieces are gonna fit together, basically, wait, how are they gonna fit together? They're gonna, I mean, clearly this is wrong, but they're gonna fit together sort of like, like this. Wait, how does this work? Wait. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so confused. <laughs> so since they're gonna fit together essentially like this, like imagine this is the edge. The edge pieces don't actually connect to each other. You need a triangle in between them. So here in this bag, Jan has so helpfully <laughs> separated out all of the edge pieces, which you can see they do have an actual edge. So you can find all of the edge pieces pretty easily. But then she also separated out all of the pieces that go between the edge pieces. So I have to decide, like, do I want to mix them all back together or do I want to give myself a little help and just do the full edge and then try to figure out all of these middle pieces? 
I don't know. I'll think on that. We will figure it out once I make this video someday. Okay, so these next puzzles are ones that have actually been requested quite a lot from viewers. They are the world's most difficult jigsaw puzzle series from Buffalo Games. So these are from the late 80s. This one says 87, this one says 88. And the thing about these that makes it so difficult is that what they have done is they have, it's a double-sided puzzle. So on the front of the puzzle is this picture and then on the back of the puzzle is the same picture, but rotated 90 degrees. <laughs> and here's the other thing that they do. So you guys might know that in the past, whenever I've done a double-sided puzzle, you can pretty much always tell which side is the front and which side is the back based on the bevel of the edge of the pieces. Like you can see what direction it was cut from. But with these puzzles, they actually cut it twice. So they cut the puzzle and then they flip the whole thing over and they cut it again from the other side. And that means that the bevel is exactly the same on both sides of the pieces. So you truly do not know which side is the front and which side is the back. So you can see on the front, it says only 500 pieces seems like 4,000. <laughs> so one someday when I do these, it's definitely gonna be a challenge. <laughs> so they came out with a bunch of different ones from this series. The two that I decided to buy off of Jan are uh, Leprechaun's Luck, and I like this one because it's actually a leprechaun doing a jigsaw puzzle. And I just like any puzzles that are like a puzzle of a puzzle. I think that's fun. And then I liked this one because this is from the company Buffalo Games, but the puzzle is called Buffalo Games and the picture is of Buffalo Games. <laughs> I think this is one of the first puzzles that Buffalo Games ever released. So I just love this as a piece of jigsaw puzzle history. So if we open it up, you can see here are the pieces again. So the same picture on the front and the back, definitely going to be a challenge. <laughs> And then finally, the last puzzle that I got from Jan is almost a solid colored puzzle. This is a Beatles white album jigsaw puzzle. And I think that Jan said she threw this one in for free because it is missing a piece. So, I mean, that'll make it even more challenging, right? <laughs> So this one is only sort of a solid colored puzzle because on the front, you can see it's mostly white. It does have the logo here on it, but then on the back, there is an actual picture of these four records. So the solid colored side will be pretty challenging, but then the other side should be totally fine. So we'll see when I get to that puzzle, but it's just another one for my solid colored puzzle collection, which is quickly growing. All right, so that is the end of all of the puzzles that I got from Jan. Now let's look at these round Springbok puzzles. So before Springbok um, in the 80s started doing their square black and white boxes, um, in the 70s, they actually had round boxes like this. How cool are these? So the first one that I got in the round box is a puzzle that I've been wanting for a really long time. This is, I think, the first solid colored puzzle ever produced. I believe this was released in 1969. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's when it came out. It is called Little Red Riding Hood's Hood, and as you can see, it is a fully solid red puzzle. Even the cardboard on the back is red, not their typical green. When I bought this, I had an eBay alert set up, so I saw it as soon as it was posted, and there is one piece missing, and there was a picture um, on the eBay listing of it put together, so I know exactly what piece it is, so I was not too worried about that because I just wanted to own this puzzle, but I waited until like the last, I don't know, five minutes to put in my bid and there was somebody else who really wanted this puzzle and we got into a bidding war and I paid a 
little bit more than I was expecting, but it's fine. I ended up with my puzzle. I'm sorry to the person that I outbid in literally like the last 10 seconds. It was so stressful. But here's the thing that I think is going to be interesting about this puzzle. Looking at the pieces, they look so similar to the round puzzler puzzle that I already did in a video. And I still have that puzzle together in the box. So what I'm planning to do is to do this puzzle and then compare the cuts and see if they are exactly the same and see if I can, you know, interchange pieces back and forth because I think that would be really fun. But I don't know for sure if that is the case. They might just be similar shapes, but a slightly different cut. I don't know, we'll have to wait and find out. <laughs> So this next puzzle is so colorful. I love this so much. It is called Computer Talk. And anything that is like retro futurism is my favorite aesthetic. Like imagine where they were with computers back in, I don't know, the early 70s when this was released. And so we have this design with all of these like computer things on it, all on this really nice, like painted watercolor background. On the back, they even tell you all the different computer languages that are featured on it. So if anyone was working in computers back in the day, maybe this will look familiar to you. If we open it up, let's take a look inside. Oof, this box is not in the best shape. It gets a little bit stuck. There we go. Here are some of the pieces. Just look at how beautiful that is. I love this so much. After that, we have this one, which is called Whirling Discs. And I just love any vintage puzzles that are just graphic patterns like this and not, you know, the typical landscape photographs. Like something like this is my favorite type of puzzle. And so I love that, you know, they were making these way back in the day. So here are all of the pieces. Um, I think it'll be challenging, but not a huge challenge because you can kind of tell where the like thicker blue stripes are or the thicker yellow stripes or this really big red stripe. So I don't think this will be the most difficult one. I think it'll be super fun though. And then finally, um, this one is really interesting. So this one is called Double Image and the artwork is by Salvador Dali. I learned about this puzzle in the History of Jigsaw Puzzles book that is like the Bible for jigsaw puzzle lovers. <laughs> so this is actually a custom artwork that was commissioned by Springbok from Salvador Dali just for this jigsaw puzzle. So you can see it has these like puzzle piece motifs throughout. That's like a puzzle piece dolly clock, which is so interesting. There's another one over there, really beautiful. Once again, the box gets a little bit stuck. There we go. So here are all of the pieces. Um, since this one is an actual image and not a solid color, um, I don't think it'll be too difficult to put together. So I will get to that one of these days. So next, let's take a look at these two puzzles that come in very interesting boxes. So this one is the Spilt Milk Jigsaw Puzzle. And I only just got this one like just a week ago. This is another one that I learned about from the History of Jigsaw Puzzles book. And once again, it is a solid colored puzzle. This one is fully white. And once you put it together, it makes this shape that looks like milk has spilled out onto your table. Also, um, my sister pointed this out when I sent her a picture of this. This puzzle describes itself as wet looking. <laughs> which is a little gross. Like you can just call it glossy. It doesn't have to be wet looking, <laughs> but I think it is so fun that it comes in a milk carton and mine is still fully sealed, brand new. I think that when I open this up, I'm gonna try to get into it from the bottom so that I can leave the top intact. Um, you can sort of see a little hint of the puzzle pieces in there, so. We'll see how that goes. And then this one was a puzzle that was 
um, suggested to me by a viewer. Again, I had never heard of this before and it wasn't even on eBay. I basically told him like, sounds interesting. I'll look out for it. And then he sent me a link of where I could get it on Facebook Marketplace. So I did that and now I have it. You can see that it's not the typical puzzle piece shape. It's these rectangular pieces that can be arranged in different ways. Um, there's also a $25,000 contest, something to do with rearranging the shapes to make this eye. I need to look into this more. I don't really get it quite yet. So you can see that the box is pretty beat up, but when we open it up, all of these puzzle pieces are in here and still sealed. So the pieces themselves are brand new. And then there's also this like booklet that goes along with it. So this is going to be a very involved video when, once I actually dig into it. So stay tuned for that one of these days. All right, we've made it to our last batch of puzzles. So these are all just kind of random puzzles that I have bought off of eBay. So this is one that I've been wanting for a while now. I had an eBay alert set up as soon as one showed up. It had a like buy it now button. I was like, that's mine. I want it, it's mine. <laughs> so this is another one for the solid colored puzzle collection. This is the Dole Banana Solid Yellow Puzzle. It's actually called Flat Banana. Um, it's by Springbok. Oh my God, all of these pieces are falling out. I need to put them in a Ziploc bag inside of here. So as you can see, the logo is actually part of the puzzle. Um, I had a friend over and she just wanted to put together the logo. So I let her do that. But then all of the rest of the pieces are solid yellow, no picture at all. All right, this next one, it still has the original shrink wrap on it, but it is literally like falling off. Like, can you see that? So I think I'm actually just gonna take it off right now. So the story with this puzzle is that I kept seeing it on eBay. Like there was only one available. Somebody had it up for sale. Nobody was buying it for a good like two months. And it was expensive. It was like $100. So I kept passing it by. But then finally I was like, you know, if nobody's buying it, maybe I can just make an offer to the seller and maybe they'll sell it to me for a lower price. So I did, I ended up getting it for $80. Um, with shipping, it was still $100, but I basically got free shipping. So I'm gonna have to zoom in so that you can see the picture here. But as you can see, it is all of these circles that are half blue and half green, but they're all rotated slightly differently. And as I've been saying, this is another one of those puzzles where it's a vintage puzzle, but it has this, you know, graphic illustrated design, which I love. So let's open it up. This is actually the first time I'm opening it because it had the shrink wrap on it before. Ooh, look at the red cardboard. That's so, like it stands out so much against these yellow puzzle pieces. It also comes with this booklet of how to have a puzzle party. So I will go through that in more detail once I do a video about this puzzle. Yeah, this is amazing. Okay, you just wait, this booklet is incredible. And then finally, these last three I got uh, all from the same seller on eBay. I basically went through their store and just found different puzzles that I wanted to try. So this is the one that originally caught my eye. This is a coloring puzzle. So you can see that the design is fully black and white and you're meant to color it in. This is called Color Me Perfect. Um, the design is of different cats doing different cat things. And if we open it up, it comes with the original colored pencils that were originally included with the puzzle. And then the seller had actually already completed it. So I'll have to take that apart so that I can do it for myself and then maybe make like a photocopy of the image so that I can color it in. I'm not actually gonna color on the puzzle pieces because 
I want to preserve them. But actually, this Puzzle Plus series is one that I've recently gotten really interested in. So uh, this is it, another Springbok puzzle, and in the 80s they had this whole series of puzzles called Puzzles Plus. Each one came with a different like activity or something else that came with the puzzle to go along with the puzzle. So obviously this one is coloring. Um, they have one that's like a rug hooking puzzle where the puzzle itself is the design and then you get a booklet that's like a tutorial of how to do rug hooking and how to make the design that's on the puzzle. They have one that is different uh, cocktails and it comes with the recipes for the cocktails. There's a backgammon puzzle where you're making the backgammon board and it comes with the pieces so you can actually play backgammon. Not all of them are winners, I don't think. Like there's this beer one that comes with coasters. Nah. And then there are some Christmas ones that just come with an ornament. Again, not quite as exciting, but I like these which have a little activity that come along with them. So I think I'm going to start trying to collect more of these Puzzle Plus puzzles. Next, this one isn't quite as interesting, but it was only $4, so I decided to just pick it up. This is the Marbles puzzle from Springbok. Um, this one is not quite as vintage. I think it's probably from like the 90s or the early 2000s. You can see that the box is smaller and it looks a little bit more modern than those other ones that I showed. But I just think this is really fun, this close-up design of all of these marbles. And once again, it looks like, yeah, the entire thing is already put together. So I will go ahead and take that apart once it's time for me to put it together. And then finally, this was so interesting to me. This is not a jigsaw puzzle. This is a board game released by Springbok back in, I don't even know, the 70s maybe? 1968. So I'm just gonna go through the whole thing because I don't think I'm gonna do a video on this because it's not a jigsaw puzzle, but it's really simple. So you can probably just recreate it yourself at home. So this is called Alphabok. It is a solitaire word puzzle game. So you're not playing against anyone. You just play it like on your own. So here's how it works. There are all of these phrases that they give you. If you want to try this for yourself, you can just take a screenshot of all of this so that you can see all of the different sentences. And then here is the board. Basically, you just need a board with 26 rows of 10 columns each. And then you have all of these letters. These at the bottom are just extras. So these are the ones that you would be playing with. So again, take a screenshot if you want to try this for yourself. So what you do is you pick a phrase like little strokes fell great oaks, and then you put the letters to spell out that phrase in the first column going down. And then after that, you have to use all of the rest of the letters to make words that start with each of these letters. It's a little hard to explain, but here is the example that they gave. So you can see that you're making all of these long words and you just have to keep rearranging them until you come up with 26 words that start with the given letters that use every single one of these letter pieces. So I actually photocopied everything and brought it home while I was visiting my family. We gave it a try. It, it was fine. <laughs> it's not really the type of game that you socialize over, I guess. It's more something that you have out on your desk and you just kind of play with it and rearrange the words and the letters, but we did not manage to solve the one that we tried, so it is definitely challenging. But if you're into like crossword puzzles and other word games, it might be fun to just kind of recreate it and give it a try. It would also probably be really easy to code something up and make it like a computer game rather than a physical game. So if anybody wants to do that, send me the link. <laughs> All right, so I hope you liked seeing all of these interesting vintage puzzles. Let me know in the comments what caught your eye, what you want to see me dig into further and actually put together in a video. And of course, I have an entire list going of additional 
interesting vintage puzzles that I definitely want to get someday, but you know, I need to pace myself. I've kind of spent a lot of money already. <laughs> Ooh, what should your code word be? I went through so many different things in this video. I think your code word will be Springbok because that was kind of the theme of this, this whole video. Pretty much almost all of the most interesting puzzles came from Springbok. <laughs> oh, and if you want to see another interesting collection of interesting vintage things, make sure that you watch my video with my dad where he tells us all about his anvil collection. So I'm gonna link that right down below. All right, that'll be it from me. Happy puzzling. I'll see you all in the next one.